Hi, welcome to Scott's Canine Training, and this will be lessons 9 and 10. Well, what I want you guys to focus on while we have this time is to work on more attention training. So this is what I, when we first, when you first joined the class, we worked on this, but I just want to revisit it because if your dog has great attention, then they're going to be able to work for you a lot better. If their mind is always elsewhere, then they're going to have a hard time paying attention to you or doing the things that you're asking of them because they're distracted looking at other things. So I just want to revisit this attention training. Um, one of the keys is we're not going to tell the dog anything, but if they're looking at us, we're going to mark it and then we're going to praise and reward it. If our dog continues looking at us, we're going to keep praising them and keep rewarding them. All right. We don't have to mark it again, but we do need to praise and reward. So I'm going to have a bunch of treats in my left hand and I'm going to hold it close to my belly. And if my dog looks at me, yes, good boy. And if he continues looking at me, good boy, that's the way. Good boy. Yes, good boy. That away. So I can even extend out between rewards. Yay, that's the way by keep praising him. That away. That away, good boy. That away. Good boy. So you saw how long it was between I, before I gave him a reward on that one. Now he's not looking at me, so as soon as he looks at me again, then I need to mark and reward. Yes, good boy. Good boy. That's the way. Good boy. Good boy. That's the way. Good boy. Good. Good boy. So you saw, as soon as he looked away from me, I stopped my praise immediately. Don't forget, don't, you can't just continue praising, continue praising. You have to be aware that if they stop looking at you, you need to stop that praise. So the next thing we want to do, because we have the treats in our hand, we can also teach our dogs not to pick up the treats. So what I'm going to do is, as he's looking at me, I'm going to praise and reward, just like attention training. But I'm going to give him one, and I'm going to drop a bunch. And if he tries to pick it up, I'm going to jerk his head up and tell him to no. And if he leaves it, I'm going to take out some more treats and reward him with it if he looks at me. All right, so this is how it looks. Heel. Good boy. As you can see, he's looking at me. Good boy. So now I'll give him one and I'll drop the rest. Yay, good boy. So you saw he looked at me. So I'm going to praise and reward it. Good boy. Good boy. That's the way. Now I can also... Um, Add variations to this where I can tell them to heal. And we walk by the treats. Yay, good boy. And I'll drop the rest. He doesn't pick it up, I'll reward him again. Good boy, that's the way. Good boy. That a way. And I'll start it again. Heal. Good boy. Good boy. And then I can reward and drop some. Good boy. Or drop some. If he looks at me, good boy. That away. Now I can heal past his treats. And if he tries to pick it up, I'm going to correct him. But if he doesn't pick it up, I'm going to praise him. Heal. Yay, that's the way. Good boy. Good boy. I can even stop almost right on the treats. Good boy. Now I ran out of treats, so I'll actually pick up some of these so I have more treats. Good boy. Yo. Yay, good boy. So he's actually sitting on some treats and he knows it, but he doesn't care. Good boy. Yo. Good boy. Another variation you can do is even recalling your dog past the treats. So if you have a nice strong recall, and I want you to use something better than what you just gave them now, right? And you have to be able to stop them if they're going to go pick it up. So don't go too far away. The first time you try this, you can only be about six, seven feet away because you need to stop them if they try to pick up the treat. Stay. I'll put the treat in my mouth. Come. Yay, good dog, that's the way. 
Good boy. Stay. So as you can see, he recalled past the treats, and he's even sitting on some treats. I got some treats on the ground here. We'll try it again. Start with treats in my mouth. Come. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, that way. And remember, we never finish our dogs when we do recalls, so I'm going to return to him. Stay. And I can return back to the heel position. Heel. Good boy. And that's how you can use the treats for your attention training. You can also use treats as a distraction where you give them some and drop some. You can even, when the dog gets good at it, then you can make it harder where you even recall the dog past the treats. And as you can see, Kodachi didn't even care about the treats on the ground. He only cared about getting it from me because all the time he gets treats, I always give it to him. I never let him pick treats up off the ground. That's why I purposely drop treats so I can teach him not to pick it up off the ground. All right, another thing we can revisit is doing our about turns. If you have nice tight about turns where they stay nice and close to your side, then the right turns become duck soup. It's easy for the dog because it's the same motion of your hip turning. So if you watch Kodachi here, I'll do some about turns and right turns and you're going to see how close he stays to my side. Yo. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good boy. So you see how nice and tight he was to my leg. The whole time when I was doing about turns and right turns, he didn't go out wide. And this is how I teach it. So I, I teach my dog to follow my leg. So we've done this before, but I want to review it because, like I said, if you have nice tight about turns, you're right, you'll have nice tight right turns. So I'm not even going to worry if my dog doesn't sit in this one. I'm just going to grab a bunch of treats. I'll hold it in my left hand and I'm going to turn on the spot. So stay. I'm going to be healing with my dog and I'm just going to pivot around. Well, let me go this way. I'm going to pivot around and I'm just going to stop right here on this spot and I'm going to reward my dog. I'm not even going to take another step forward. All right. So I pivot and reward, pivot and reward. So I'm moving. As soon as I pivot around, I'm going to stop right here on the spot and reward. I'm going to move off again, turn on the spot, and reward. So you notice that I never took a step forward after I made my about turn. I just turned, stopped, and reward. That's how I teach my dog to turn his head with my leg. All right, so this is how it looks. And you can play a lot of this at home. You know, you know, I did a lot of this in the patio of my living room with, with, um, or, um, with Kodachi. Just a lot of um, about turns and stopping. You don't need much room. So this is how it looks. Heel. I pivot on the spot and I reward. Good boy. Heel. I pivot on the spot and I reward. So I'm just watching him. If he turns with me, I'm going to reward him. You notice that I re when I first rewarded him, I didn't care if he sat or not. He sat now because I, I stood still, so he's, he knows he's supposed to sit. But while I'm teaching this exercise, I don't even care if they sit or don't sit, even if my motion comes to a stop. All I'm doing is teaching him one single thing, and that's for him to turn his head and stay nice and tight to my leg. So heel. If he turns, yay, good boy. I praise and reward it. Heel. Yay, good boy. Heel. Yes, good boy. Yo. So we can do it here. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. So you notice I'm pivoting and stopping right on a spot. Yo, yeah, we. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So if your dog goes wide, do not reward the wide. You don't have to reward them unless you get what you want. All right, so if your dog goes way wide like that, don't reward them, but try. You got this food in your hand, lure him. Once your dog knows that the food is there and you're luring, it's almost like luring your dog, but like I said, you can teach your dog a lot of stuff by luring. Later on, you're going to change it and turn it into rewards. All right, so 
If my dog went white, I wouldn't reward it. And then I try to do it again. Don't forget, don't try to turn super fast too. Just be nice and smooth. The smoother you can be, the better. Heel. I turn right on the spot. Yes, good boy. So you notice how he turned his head with me. That's what I'm looking for. And that is your about turn. I also want you folks to practice your finish to your right and also your finish to your left. Practice both ways. So you need a different command for each one. Okay? So on this first one I'll show you is the finish to the right. Yo. So you tell your dog to stay. Step off with your right foot. Toe to toe with your dogs. And I shall finish him to my right first. Yo. He goes around me, sits in the heel position. Praise and reward. Good boy. Stay. He will do it again. Heel. Good boy. That away. The next one we're going to do is finish to the left. Stay. Hold the leash in my left hand. Place. Good boy. And he goes to my left. Again, stay. Place. Oh, so he went the wrong way. So if he went the wrong way, I'm just not going to reward him. Okay. He moved before I could stop him, which is fine. I was late. That was a handler error. But I will just try it again. Stay. Hold the leash in my left hand. This time I will be more aware. Place. Yes, good boy. And I shall praise him a lot this time. Good boy. That's the way. Because he did it right. So I'll make it even more rewardable for him. Good boy. It will try it again. Stay. And I'll finish him to my left again. Place. Yes, good boy. Add away. Good boy. And that is your finish to your left and your finish to your right. The next thing I want you folks to practice is their healing with your light line. So I'll put my, his light line on. Good boy. So I just slip it through the live ring. I want to make sure that I have enough slack in this light line. Also, you want to make sure that you move the same way, that you correct the same way, and that you praise and reward the same way. Don't change anything when you're practicing with your light line. The closer you can make it as if you're holding on to the leash, the better it will be for you and your dog. So I'll do some healing with Kodachi and you can see that I'm going to move the same way. If he gets out of place, I'm going to correct the same way as if I was holding on to that leash. And I'm also going to praise and reward him the same way as if I was holding on to that leash. Yo, good boy. Good boy. Yay, good boy. Good boy. Yo. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yo. Good boy. That away. So he did really well. I, there was actually no need to correct him. He was in position the whole time. But my light line was there in case I needed to correct him. But as you notice, I moved the same way. If he made a mistake, I would have corrected. And I'm also praising and rewarding. For me, when he does something good, I like to praise him even as I'm moving. I don't only praise my dog after a sit. I always praise my dog in motion. If they're doing what I want them to do, which being the stay in the heel position, I'm praising it. And I want to make sure that they really know that that's the best position in the world for them that they really enjoy it. Because if you have a dog that enjoys being in the heel position, you have a dog that will heal throughout their lifetime. The next thing I want you folks to practice is your fronts. So all it is is the straight sits that's in front of our, when we do our recalls. When I do this, I teach it totally different from a, a totally separate, I should say, from a distance recall. So when I do a distance recall at 25, 30 feet, I call my dog, my dog comes running to me, as long as it sits, I'm going to give them a ton of rewards, three or four rewards, every single time they come to me. But I also need my dog to learn to sit straight in front of me. So when I do this, I like to teach it as a separate exercise. 
So when I do this, I'm going to go not more than six feet away from my dog. I'll start it with the treat in my mouth. I'll have my hands to my side. It's very, very important. You keep your hands to your side and you use your same recall word. So for me, when I call my dogs, I say come. So I'll be using that same word. So that way, every single time you use your recall word, that means sit in front of me. All right. This time, if my dog sits crooked, not straight, I'm going to step back in the direction that I'm at. So if, I'm, if my dog comes in, stay. If my dog comes in and sits this way, I'm not going to go step in front and tell him sit straight and, and line myself up with him. If I'm here and I called my dog and my dog came and sat this way, I'm going to step back in the same direction that I'm facing and I want my dog to swing into position here. So if my dog sits crooked, I'll say front or straight and my dog comes in and if they sit straight, yay, good dog, then I'll praise and reward them. But Katana already knows the game, so he came and he sat Came in, he was a little crooked at first, and then he came and he sat straight. Good boy. So I'll praise and reward him. Okay, but I want to make this only six feet, six feet away from my dog. So this is only for dogs that if you step back once or twice, straight back, that they can line yourself, they can line themselves up to you. If your dog, if you step back and they sit crooked again, and you step back in again, and they sit crooked again, and you step back and they sit crooked again, I'm going to have to show you a different method on how to teach this front. But if you have a dog that you can step back, and they can line themselves up, and you can step back and they can line themselves up, then you can use this method. So it just depends on your dog. Okay, stay. Yep. So what I'm going to do is, I, as long as I'm in a straight line with my dog, then I can use this. So I've taught this inside of the living room of my parents' house, which is really small. And I, so this, to me, this is a straight line. If I tell my dog, stay, and I'm standing straight in front of him, that's a straight line. But to me, even if I'm here at an angle from him, facing him, it's, to me, it's a, still a straight line. I can be here. As long as I'm facing his head, it's still a straight line. I can even be behind him. As long as I'm facing straight towards him, to me, it's a straight line. And I will do recalls this way. All right, so let me show you what I do. So we need to start with our treat and put it in our mouth. I'll tell my dog to stay. So remember, this is a straight line to my dog. I'm facing him. Come. Yay, my dog sat straight. Good boy, so I'll reward him and let him know he did right. Stay. I can be here. This is still a straight line. Come. Yeah, good boy. He sat perfectly straight, so I'll reward him. Notice that my hands are to my side. I'm not bringing my hand here because I want my dog to target my face. So you can even stick your treat out if you want, out of your mouth, but like this, so they can see it. But you cannot use your hands here because we don't want our dogs to target our hands. If we always say come or like this and we bring our hands to the center of our body, your dogs naturally always receive their treats from your hands. So they're going to start targeting your hands. And once you start leaving your hands to your side, if you ever enter in competition and you have to leave your hands to your side, you're going to notice that the dog is going to look at your hands so they're not going to sit straight. They're going to sit crooked because they're looking at your hand. That's why we need something center line body for our dogs to focus in on so that they can line themselves up. So that's why I like to put the treats in my mouth. So whether I have a Chihuahua or whether I have a Great Dane, I want to put the treats in my mouth so that I have a center line in my body. So again, I'll do another one. Stay. This is a straight line. Come. Good boy. He's lined up straight. So I'll praise and reward him. Good boy. Stay. Even if I'm here, remember, I'm always going to be no more than six feet away. To me, this is still a straight line. Come. Good boy. Is that straight? I praise and reward him. Good boy. Stay. Yep. Straight. So once you start 
getting like about 95% of the time your dog is always sitting straight. Now you start making it a little bit more difficult to my, for your dog, where now where I s say um, you create angles. So that means I won't be facing my dog's head. So if my dog is this way, I'm actually going to be facing away from my dog. And I'll use my same recall word, and my dog has to learn, stay. So if my dog has to learn to come into me and sit in front, they have to adjust themselves. So that makes it a little bit more difficult for the dog. So a lot of times when you first try it, like if I'm not facing my dog, a lot of times your dog will come and sit this way, crooked, on your side. And then now you have to do your fronts or sit straight, whatever word you want to use, to have your dog come in straight. And when you get that straight, if you can do it within one or two steps, you can use this method. If you can step back and they can line themselves up. So I'll show you with katana. Stay. So this would be if I'm facing straight towards him. Right? But I'm going to offset my body so I'm not facing towards him. So he has to learn to adjust and actually make the adjustment coming into me. Come. Yay, good boy. So you saw he made the adjustment and he came in towards me. Stay. Heel. We'll try it again. Stay. So if I, if I was like this, I'd be facing straight towards him. But I'm going to not face him. I'm going to face a different direction. Come. Good boy. So he knows and he came, even though he came around me, he came and he sat straight in front. I'm going to reward him. Good boy. So when you do it this way, come will always mean to the dog that I always have to sit in front of you. That's why I like to teach the dog this method because it always means your recall word will always mean sit in front so I'll show you another one that you can do if once you have remember you need 95 percent of the time when you're straight line before you start creating angles when I first start creating my angles I only face 45 degree away from my dog either way you have to make sure you go both ways this way and the other way when my dog can start doing it then I go 90 degree away from my dog yo yo straight Stay. So this would mean, this would be about a 45 degree angle away. I would recall my dog this way, or I would recall my dog this way, 45 degree. Once my dog is good at it and can do that all the time, I'll be 90 degrees away from my dog. So he has to come all the way here, and I'll also do the other way, 90 degrees. So he has to come all the way here. When my dog can do that all the time, then I'll make it more difficult where I'll face completely away from my dog. And we'll see if my dog knows that come means to sit in front of me all the time. Because I'll face completely away from my dog. Come. Yay, good boy. Good boy. So he came around me and he sat straight in front of me. So he knows that come means to sit in front. So this is one of the ways that I teach my dogs to always sit, how, how to sit straight in front of me. But it always starts with you facing them first. So in review, stay. We will always do recalls this way with the dog straight. Remember, you can always go like this way as long as it's a straight line. And a straight line means you're facing your dog's head. Recall your dog this way. Recall your dog here. And also the other way, around the clock. Recall your dog here. As long as you're facing your dog's head, it's a straight recall to me. Once your dog gets that all the time and they're 100% or 95% correct all the time doing that way where you don't have to step back. You tell your dog, stay. Oh, so let me, sh and then you'll create angles this way to this way, and then 45 degrees to 90 degrees, and do your recalls that way. So I didn't show you what happens if my dog sits crooked. So let's say, because Katana sits <laughs> straight all the time. So let's say I recalled Katana. And Stay. Let's say I recalled Katana and he sat like this when I recalled him. So I'm going to actually step back the way I'm facing. So straight. Yeah. Good boy. So I step back and he straightens himself out to sit straight in front of me. All right? So let's say, stay. Let's say I called him and he sat crooked this way. I need to make sure it's very important that you step back in the direction that you're facing and not do this. 
and step in front of the dog that way, but you step back in the direction you're facing. So straight or front, whichever word you want to use, good boy. And when he sits straight, I reward him. So I wouldn't give him a reward if he sat crooked. If he sat crooked over here, I'd take another step back, front. Yeah, and if he sat straight, then I would reward him. So you can only do this to a dog if you can get that straight front and two steps back, no more than that. All right, and then I'll show you how to do it if your dog keeps sitting crooked every single time you step back. This is the second method that I use if my dog, um, to teach my dog to sit straight. If my dog cannot, as I step back, they sit crooked. As I step back again, they still sit crooked in front of me. And I keep doing that and they always sit crooked, then I cannot use the method that I just showed you with Katana. So Kodachi was one of those. Every single time I step back, he'd sit crooked like this, usually this way. I'd step back, he'd sit crooked again. So I thought of a different method that I'd use with him, and all it is is guides. So all it is is a piece of wood. I got an L bracket. I got sharp screws so it doesn't go through. And I put it over here, and I put it about an inch above the bottom because I actually want my wood to lean out a little bit. I don't want it to be straight up and down because if it was straight up and down and my dog bumped it, it might fall in on my dog and scare my dog, So, which I don't want. So I, I, if you can see, I made it a little bit above the wood, from the bottom of the wood. And this way, my, my, wood, uh, my guides lean outwards and not in or straight up. So I never have to worry about it falling in on top of my dog. So I'm going to basically do the same thing as I did with Tatana where I have my guides here and I'll put it really close. If your dog is afraid of the guides, I want you to have your treats and walk through, lure your dog through and your dog walks through and you're going to reward, you walk through. So you're just going to widen it a little bit more. You're going to have some treats on you. Yeah, you're going to guide your dog through, they walk through, yay, hey, good boy, and you're just going to reward your dog. Okay. Yeah, they walk through, yay, hey, good dog, and you're going to reward them. And that's how you're going to get used to, your dog used to, to the guides, if they're afraid of them. Some dogs are, some dogs aren't. So it just depends on your dog. Okay, so I'll put it fairly close together, so he has to sit straight. Remember, on this same exercise, I'm going to um, never go more than six feet away. I always place my dog within six feet. So, you know, I always want to face my dog stay facing right here in front, about a foot in front of the guides. So no matter where I place my dog, I always want him pointing there. So stay. So let's say I'm the dog and I was to place my dog. I'm going to place them here. As I start creating angles, I can place him here. I can place my dog here. But you notice I'm always placing him in front of the guides. I'm going to be standing here with, when I recall my dog all the time. All right? So I'm always going to aim my dog for about a foot in front of the guides. So a straight line this way, of course, is easy. It's a straight line, so they're facing that way. But eventually, I want to create angles for my dog, meaning I want to turn him. I want to work around the clock. So my dog always knows that no matter what, he has to curl in and come and sit in front of me and not on the side of me. So I'll always face him towards this mark right here, no matter where I place him. Again, so if I'm the dog, I can place him here, and I'll show you this later. But you see how I'm facing in front of, about a foot in front of the guides. I can place him here, but again, it's a foot in front of the guides. I can even eventually, when he gets good, I can place him here. But you notice, I'm not, I'll be standing there. I'm not making him face me. I'm still making him face about a foot in front of the guides. I can also want, I also want to work at this angle. So I'll place him here. I can place him here. But I'm always making him face about a foot in front of the guides. So this is how it looks when we actually do the training. We'll put the treat in our mouth, just as if we're doing a recall. Because we always want the target to be our face. We never want the target to be our hands. So on this one, it's a straight recall in. Stay. Come right in front of the guys, so you notice. I'm right up to the guides with my toes, so my toes, with, so my dogs can't run by this guide. 
Rashi come. Good boy. He sits and I praise and reward. So he has to sit straight. He has no choice because the guides are making him sit straight. So on this one, every single time they sit, once they come in the guides, they're going to sit straight for you. The key is to make them think that no matter what angle they're at, they have to come and sit in front of you. And that's how they eventually learn that, that when you do your recall, that they have to sit in front of you. So after I get my dog here, I just release my dog, okay? And I have him come out, heel. Good. So now I'll line my dog up a little bit at an angle. But as you notice, I'm lining him up about a foot ahead of the, my boards. Stay. And I'll put my toes right up against the boards. Karachi, come. Good boy. Oh, yeah. Good boy. So you know he tried to sit a little bit more back. I just coaxed him to come more in so he can be straight. Okay. All right, we go, let's say I did that about four or five times. Now I'll start him at a little bit different angle. So you notice he's a little bit more um, sideways. Stay. Line myself up again. Kodashi, come. Good boy. All the way in. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. All right, we can even place some here. Okay. So don't forget, even when you're coming more this way, it becomes more difficult for the dog. You still need to line him up facing that one spot about a foot in front. Stay. Start to come. Good boy. So you notice he came around and then came into me, still sat in front. A lot of times, once you start building that angle and you get that extreme, they're going to want to run and come into the heel position because the heel position is so strong. But he came in front, so I rewarded him. Good boy. Well, we'll make it a little bit more difficult. We'll see what he knows. Stay. Thought you come. Good boy. Yep, he's still new to run in front of me and come in front. Come means sit in front. All right. Okay. And we can even work it from this side. Straight. So always line them up about a foot in front of the board. Stay. Does she come? Good. Straight. Yeah. Good boy. So we'll always line them up. And I'll play even build it to all till he's all the way over here also. So he always comes in front. Once the dog starts learning this, all right, and they're getting good at it, I can start widening my guides. Stay. So my guides are really tight now, but once my dog gets pretty good at it, I can start spreading my guides apart. Could that you come? Good boy. Is that great? I'm going to praise and reward him. All right. We can still do angles if we want. Stay. Always aiming a foot in front. That you come. Little crooked. I'm not going to reward him yet. Straight. Yeah. I'm only going to reward him when I got my nice straight set. All right. Good boy. Until eventually. Okay. I don't need my guides. Because I've played around the clock with these guides. So again, if, once I widen my guides, I'll, play, I'll do it all the way around again, putting them in all different kind of positions. And once I've widened it about this much, then I'll just remove it. Kodachi, come. Oh, not what I wanted, so I'm not going to reward it. Heel. And we'll try it again. Stay. Now, if he makes another mistake, I'm going to put my guides back up. Kodachi, come. He made another mistake. Tells me he doesn't understand what I'm doing. The guides are gone. Yep. Okay. So don't forget, if the dog makes two mistakes in a row, you notice I didn't scold him. All I did was try again. And when he made the same mistake again, 
I didn't scold him again. All I did was put him out there, but now I'm going to make it easier for him so that I can get success. By making it easier, I'm putting my guides back. I can even spread it out. I'll go to that amount and see if he understands if he tries to slide in between me because now there's still enough space. Kodachi come. There was enough space that tells me he still didn't understand. He's confused for some reason. So I'll try again. Sit. Sit. He made a mistake, so I'm going to bring it in closer. And again, I'm going to make it easy for him where he cannot make a mistake because I brought my wood in. So you notice I never did scold him. Kodachi come. Yay, good boy. Out of way. Good boy. So you notice, once he did it, now I'm super happy that he did it. I didn't get upset or anything that he did it wrong. I don't care. He's still learning it. Right? He's not perfect. He made a mistake. I make it easier. He made another mistake. I make it easier. When he got it right, I'm super happy. Yay! I'm going to praise him a lot and let him know that that's what I want. So that he can, I can get the repeat behavior because now I rewarded him. So you cannot get mad at your dog. If they start making mistakes, you cannot get mad or frustrated. And then what, what, what it does if you get mad is you make your dog lose its confidence, which is the worst thing you can do. When they lose their confidence, then they start going slower or they start making even more mistakes because they want to please you, but they're not sure what you want. So the best thing to do is not reward them when they make mistakes and then when they and make things easier for them. So I'm going to try again. Come here, boy. Yeah, that way. Straight. Good. Okay, I'll put some rewards in my mouth. Okay. I'll try it at the same distance. I'll do it at least a couple more times. That you come. Yay, good boy. Yeah, I'll praise him and let him know that that's what he did. He did it right. Good boy. All right, let's try again. Good. I can even go at an angle. Good boy, stay. Notice I'm aiming him in front. Does she come? Good boy. That away. Good boy. We'll try it again. Kodachi. Sit. Good boy, stay. I can widen this now because he had success. Karachi, come. Yay, good boy. Out of way. Good boy. And let's say I did that about three or four times, and let's see if he can do it now without the guides. Stay. Karachi, come. Nope, he's still looking at the guides. So that's telling me he's looking at the guides. So I need to widen the guides to fade it at a slower rate. That's what it's telling me. Okay, yo. So if you notice, I'll put the guides back in the picture, but I'm going to widen it. So all it's telling me is I have to fade it a little more slowly. Stay. So if I put it here, but I'll widen it a little bit more. I'm pretty sure he's going to come and sit in front of me. Kodachi, come. Good boy. Good boy. So you saw that that just tells you that he just needed it to be faded a little slower. That having it this wide and then removing it completely was too quickly for him. That he just needed this. So from here, next thing you know, I'm going to put it two more feet out. And then I'll increase it two more feet out. And then I can probably remove it without him without any problem with him sitting in front of me. And that's how you teach it with the boards or the guides.